Welcome friends, this is Manuel Khan and we're going to start a new Let's Roleplay for Stellaris Federations. Let's talk about the settings. We're going to go for Grand Admiral, we're going to go for Maximum Crisis, so the highest difficulty. We're going to go for the maximum number of Marauder Empires and Fallen Empires and there are some Scions added in these origins of the ones we have here. And here I've had a couple of very strong empires added to the game in the <laughs> some winners of the last or of the still running rather um, grand AI tournament. So they're very good AIs and uh, we're going to go and uh, put them into the game too. So. We have a fully constructed community galaxy with around 30 AIs that will make my life, uh, well, maybe hell, maybe heaven. We'll see. There are some peaceful ones out there. I mean, the, the kind of the dominant tendency is some militarist badasses, but uh, <laughs> we'll see how that works. So uh, how's the style of this one? Um, we're gonna go um, at the start. We're gonna go methodical. If there are any new things, um, we're gonna show them in detail. The new federation things, like at the at the start mostly, and uh, then we'll continue to play on in a role playing style, even though we want really want to win. So. Um, it's all, always that balance, and if, if anything, we can also make really wrong decisions from a gameplay standpoint. If, if it's um, going to fit with the roleplay, I'll take these decisions. So it's going to be maybe a little bit harder then. But uh, we have also a very interesting setup that is going to be something like a research-based corporation. So I'll show you what we have here. So we have Ruthless Competition. Ruthless Competition gives you additional leader level cap and experience gain. So we're going to have good leaders. Then we have Brand Loyalty. That gives you 15% more monthly unity. So that we're going to progress there. So you, you're seeing already, we're going to go into the direction of rather a tall specialist empire, at least at the start. I mean, we can change, change that later. Even the mega corporation is not set in stone. It might change if it spreads too much. It might go into some imperial thing or maybe a, an oligarchy. We never know. Um, we'll do what makes sense and what these people would do. So they are egalitarian. Faction influence gain goes up and specialist pop resource output goes up a bit. Fanatic materialist, the research speed goes up by 10%, robot upkeep minus 20%. So you see that we're going into the direction of uh, robotic, even though there, there's a Tino, there's there's everyone saying that robots have been nerfed. We'll see if the synth ascension has been nerfed so much, uh, because that's probably one of the goals we'll go for. Um, that also fits the backstory. If you haven't seen the backstory, um, that's like the teaser I've made. So. Uh, you know who uh, this new Eden Corporation is. They are actually Void Dwellers. They've fled from their home planet that is barely remembered. It's after the, <laughs> the old word for soil that is called Earth. But there's not much known about this, even though it is rumored that they had to flee from an event called the Nano Plague. The New Eden Corporation was the corporation that had constructed these habitats in space so everyone could flee onto them. Before that, the habitats in space weren't so popular. So, um, you really don't know what, what exactly happened there, but it made the New Eden Corporation the governing force by pure power. Now let's see about these, these humans. How, how have they developed? Of course, they're void dwellers. That increases their resource output. Specialist pops and work pops get 15% more research output. They get 10% less pop growth speed, which, which is a serious nerf. 
Uh, they're also slow breeders, which is another serious nerf for pop growth speed. So we're gonna have very few pops and for that reason we're gonna go as tall as we can, so to say. We are intelligent and have natural engineers. So we have more research from jobs, we have more engineering research, extra engineering research, connected to these orbital habitats, of course, and then we're traditional. We have the tradition of like going for tech and uh, clinging to that ideal that everyone has a chance if he just puts in enough work in. So we're led by <laughs> Immanuel Khan, one of the wealthiest families of the New Eden Corporation uh, nepotism structures, <laughs> has had uh, the, this leader evolve. I don't know how I came to that name, uh, but we're gonna select this now. Just you, you can see a little bit an overview of all that is there. Like as you can see, there's there's some hegemonies and and things like that that are waiting for us in that maybe unforgiving space. So we're gonna go and play a huge galaxy with a spiral galaxy because I, I really like the form of that aesthetically we have 30 ai empires there are no advanced ai starts but there might be some advanced ai starts that are caused by the empires added to the game so there are some surprises coming we have five fallen empires there might be more through the scion um, origins and we have three marauder empires the crisis strength is five times the strength, so we're gonna have quite a challenge there with the new uh, AIs also for the crisis. Mid game, uh, end game, start year, I've been unmodded. Victory year, I'm gonna leave this open because I don't want it to, to end in a situation where like everything is still open or something like that. And it's rumored that the end game now doesn't lag so much, so we're gonna go for that. Then, most of it is, as you can see, is standard. We have uh, Iron Man mode off. Why do I do this? Because, yeah, we're recording for YouTube and sometimes it's probably gonna be like, until the end with the roleplay, it's, it might be like a 100 episodes or something. And then there's always, there's always something when something doesn't work then something doesn't work in 100 episodes there's always three or four episodes that like go bad and then i want to be able to really record them that's because of that we're gonna iron man mode but i'm not gonna save scum like i just don't do that it it just diminishes the fun in the game you have to live with the consequences <laughs> even of really bad random events that makes the game more fun so here we go let's play see what we get as a galaxy starting the game where will this throw us in and what what will we encounter hopefully we're getting a good start <laughs> i have a tradition of getting all the worst starts like boxed in somewhere in the remote area even though that would not be as bad now if you're going and aiming for a tall empire, that's not that bad then. I mean, it's fine. It's hopefully fine. <laughs> we'll see about it. Come on, load it, load it now. We're gonna have our, our ships and our mainly research ships at the start going for it. I really plan to have more than one research ship out there maybe two maybe three maybe even four because uh we need to know what's going on and we are really curious to see what we can discover we want to find those ancient relics to exploit as well and uh, maybe go along with some interesting stories of former mega corporations maybe discover some new aliens that have interesting trade opportunities or which we can uh, form 
a uh, research cooperative with. That would be fun. Or a trade league. That would also be great. So let's see where this leads us. Ah. The New Eden Corporation. Led by Emmanuel Kahn. Let's see. Let's read about the origin of the Void Dwellers. To most, the vacuum of space is a hostile environment to be conquered or overcome. To us, it is home. For thousands of years, our species has resided on three space stations. Well, not for thousands, but in, for the backstory, it's for hundreds of years. Each orbiting a different sun in a trinary star system. Whether they were built by our ancestors or someone else, we do not know. We actually do know. They were built by the New Agent Corporation. At least that's what the, our story says, right? But it doesn't... Maybe they have lied to us. <laughs> Although our biology would suggest that our species at some point originated on a planet, recorded history makes no mention of it. Some speculate that the shattered planetary remnants found beneath one of our stations is the lost homeworld of our species, but the truth may never be known. It's only been a few centuries since spaceflight allowing travel between our three stations was invented or rediscovered, depending on who you ask. Suspicion and mistrust gradually gave way to trade and mutual cooperation. At the time of our first hyperdrive, the three habitats had united under one flag. Let's begin and let's give me a, a short cut to get an overview of the situation we have here. So what I did there, you can see it already, I renamed them to have a little bit more flavor here. The New Eden Complex was the start of Kant's hope and the power of the stars for our energy habitat here. And uh, now we're going to go for uh, the most important decisions you make, the decisions at the start of the game. So you can see we have this man here, Timothy Zachman, our meticulous scientist on... Uh, the Eden Torch, and uh, we'll send him out to explore the galaxy. He's meticulous. So, what you want to do with meticulous people is um, you usually want them to survey the systems as they will discover a lot of anomalies, um, a little bit more than normal people, and so they're perfect for that. Uh, you have other people that can just go explore systems. Just getting a rough overview where the planets lie and, and things like that, but we're not going to expand instantly. And so it's more important to survey the systems instantly. Let's Why not let's go here. And we have the construction ship. And that's also always a very important thing. What to build first, what to make first. As you can see we have engineering research of 28. That's pretty okay. Um, we have a an okay mineral income which means we could we could build a research station here instantly or we could go for this combination and uh, go for the basic resources now that's a little bit safer the other thing is a little bit more risky we get a bonus on research, engineering research output, so... But in general, it's always usually best to go for the limiting factor, and that could be the minerals. So, um, we go for this station first. I know it just adds one mineral. It's really bad, but we need more minerals, and then we'll get... The energy for that at New Eden Sea, and then we'll go for Leffingwell for another mineral, and then fly back to Knutten. And that's going to be okay, hopefully. So let's have a look at our ruler. It's Immanuel Kahn. He's a charismatic industrialist. Just just the kind of man who would lead a, a big corporation, right? Like, like Elon Musk. <laughs> he's undoubtedly charismatic, and he's also kind of an industrialist. So we, what this means is we get more monthly minerals, 10% more, and uh, we're charismatic. Edict cost goes down by 10%, which is very good for us if we want to map the stars to explore the galaxy. And we have an edict duration of 20% more, which is, well, even better then. <laughs> agenda is not so great with a national purity, but at least we get a little bit more influence, which is uh, perfectly helpful in expanding at the start if you don't want to go for the expansion tradition which you don't want to go for if you're in megacore rather go for something something else something else that 
makes your tall game better. So um, that's one of the main points here. So next we'll go for the policies and important things here are, for example, the economic policy. If you want an, a civilian, a mixed or a militarized economy, I usually go for a mixed at the start because you need a mix mostly. Um, same goes for the trade policy. You're just It's just so flexible to get all the trade income to energy credits. Later on, when you, are, you are, have superfluous resources, um, then you'll go for something like this consumer benefits or marketplace of ideas. When you have, a, when you're lacking something, then you want this to support you. And population controls, yeah, we have them prohibited right now, but they could be allowed later on. Um, slavery is prohibited, of course, as we are egalitarian and not authoritarian. And then the food policy. I mean, that's interesting. We, we will have um, the nutritional plentitude has food and mineral upkeep increased and the happiness and the pop growth speed increased. So if you have enough food and we have enough food, you should go for nutritional plentitude as quickly as you can. Diplomatic stance. As you can see, we have different stances here available. These are new and they are very interesting to have. So cooperative makes no sense if you know no other alien ships. Belligerent makes no sense. Expansionist is something that could be useful. Mercantile increases our trade value, trade protection and the diplomatic weight from economy. It's kind of a toss up. I think first we want to probably go and use expansionist first. We can change this in 10 years and we will, probably, but now expansionist is best for a good start. I mean, we could have waited a little bit before we built the next outpost, but we're just gonna make it and make a setup here um, so we can change it earlier, later on. It, it's not gonna have a big influence at the start, but it has, it's going to have, have a big influence on the cost of our outposts. And we want to make these outposts as quickly as possible, as we don't have really good resources here. Um, we're going to... Uh, our main source of income first, with this setup with the habitats, will be outposts. So to decrease what they cost is pretty good. And um, there's that. So the construction ship is going heading to Tronchet and we're going to go for our research choices. So let's go for our research decisions now. I mean, it, it is tempting, but um, on the other hand, we don't need it. We don't need that either. So the logical thing is to go for more research. And that's what we're going to do. More physics research for us. Then we have Nathan Rigdon from the Society Research. And of course, Offworld Trading Company doesn't really make sense at the start. As you can see here, mm. <laughs> how should we use that? We're going to go for society research instead. Then um, we also have ship upgrades here for military ship upgrades. So um, we're not going to use them. So let's go for nanomechanics. We have the perfect research setup, right? <laughs> Just what you would do. And um, what we are aim f aiming for is basically also increasing uh, another um, the, the alloy is to get another one or two signed science ships at, at least. And uh, Strikeforce Kraken will stay here. I mean, there's some kind of trick when you edit the corvettes and like basically dismount their weapons and then get some alloys for it and back. But we're not going to do that because we still need some energy credits uh, to get another leader. And then we only will be build another another science ship here I mean it has no it has no real advantage <laughs> so we're not gonna do it we're gonna fly over here with the Eden torch mm. and then well there's only one thing missing edicts we're gonna map the stars we could do that right now um we could wait until the system is reached that is probably the, the better choice, right? So 
um, name of traditions, relics, anything, anything else that will not be uh, important at the start. What is important is uh, that we're starting to explore and expand. So let's go. Make it a little bit faster. And also, because of our low growth speed, we're not going to need anything much done for the time being here. I mean, as you can see here, we would need some amenities here sooner or later. So a leisure district might be might be what we were going for, but it's very, very expensive. So I'm not going to go for that. As you can see, the nutritional plentitude has its cost, definitely, but it's going to help us. And so we're going for it. Science ship is on its way over. And as is often the case at the start, not that much happens. Now we've reached the system and we're going to start to map the stars. Survey speed also goes up, discovery ch animal anomaly discovery chance goes up. That's 13 years due to our leader. It's just it's just a great option that we have here. I'm gonna make it a little bit less fast. And let's see what our science ship does here. And how that system looks. There's there's a barren world here. Non-existent atmosphere. Other things, another barren world. A lot of barren worlds. I mean that's not bad. We don't uh, we won't settle on any planets anyway, so we're gonna be very curious what's going on there. And we're gonna need to be here too. Let's see, once that finishes we'll go over to Upscaling complete. Hmm that's the question, right? Where should we go? Um We'll probably have some more needed minerals, so we'll fly over to Leffingwell first. Even if that is very meager, what we need now is minerals, and we won't stop the, the production of these outposts. So let's head over there and just do it, even if it seems odd at, at best, but it's probably the best move at the start here. Climb over from to New Eden Sea and now to Leffingwell and now we also have the minerals to expand so here we go that's one of the important things at the start is minerals and the other important thing you can see here we can recruit another scientist Hmm, we want a good ship captain, but it can anyways be someone whose expertise we don't yet have. And that could be biology, for example. That would be a useful addition. He's only 29. So, I mean, Carlos de la Cruz is not a bad choice at all. But we're going to go with Helmut Schneider. We're going to probably rename him in another session. So that's not his real name. I like to rename them to give a bit of flavor to the scientists. And we're gonna quickly construct another science ship. So then very, very quickly. And uh, so the thing is he will get a lot of experience by flying around, so it's not wasted in, in any ways. And oh, look at that. Yeah, I mean, we're just researching biology, right? So why not put him in charge of that and Nathan Rigdon will be put onto the ship. Yeah, that's much better. <gasps> oh, oh my goodness. Look at that. We found the Grunoa. The Eden Talk crew are eager to report they have uncovered the remains of an ancient space-faring species on Mariners 3A, who appear to have inhabited the planet some 7 million years ago. But it is unclear why this species, who called themselves the Grunua, 
disappeared from the Myrna system are scientists that isolated a promising archaeological dig site on their planet. Perhaps further study will lead to more clues. Wow, curious. Curious is it? Wow. <laughs> Finding that so early. <sighs> That's pretty nice. Now, what are we going to do with that is we're going to send someone who is um, probably one of our later science ships there and have have him explore that because that's just that's just gold so early on it's it's really really nice to have that here contact report remnants the new eden corporation is abuzz with news of the alien remnants that were recently studied these leavings are considered definitive proof of intelligent purposeful alien activity at some point in the past we may still be alone now but we are at least not the first to be so it's remarkable Here we have the Wanderer. Oh, that's nice. What a nice name. And Nathan Rickton, yeah, a resilient ship captain. That's absolutely what we want him to be. Um, we should probably send him into another direction. Or we could like make it thorough and already send him to the archaeological site. It is a bit... It is a bit, but uh, the archaeological site will only be usable when we have an outpost there. So we'll, we'll just send him to the other spaces and yeah, let him let him check out something rather remote, like this system here. He's not the absolute best for it, but it doesn't matter. Look at that. difficulty two so it's even easy whoa let's see about what we can do about that first though the construction ship is next to give us a tiny bit of more minerals every tiny bit counts there ah uh, not yet not yet not yet yeah and as i said the pop growth is going to be Upscaling complete. very slow for the time being. So it's, as you can see, we really need these minerals first. We'll just fly there and then have just enough minerals to do what we want to do, which is getting more base resources. Build that mining station. Come on! Whoa! Where are we in the great... Oh, look at that. <laughs> We're out there in the in the absolute edge of space. We have a connection to the other spiral arm. But we're like back there. And it's not too bad for someone who wants to maybe go um, tall and maybe turtle a bit. <laughs> we'll see about that. And we have a habitable world survey already. We know now, uh, without a doubt, that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to our habitats. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalogue the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus on planetary survey efforts on habitable life-bearing worlds. Yes, Situation log revised. we want to do that, and maybe we'll send some robots there, because there are some some evil germs there and, and and you know we don't really trust we don't really trust planets right who knows what happens to them when they get cracked charred broken remnants of what was once a planet a massive energy surge has detonated this world's core leaving only drifting slabs of rock <sighs> maybe someone has has deleted our home world we don't know. It could be possible, right? It's it's not out of the question. It's thrilling. Scary. Intense. Yeah, the fact. <laughs> In the 
we are in the fact system. Yeah, that's that's fitting for, for such a corporation, right? We're relying on facts, but on fat facts. Because of that, it's it's pH. And Upstanding everyone has a PhD. Complete. Because of that, um, <laughs> because of that, everything starts with a pH. Construction. And let's move it over here to Nutton. Enter that orbit. Here we go. What else are we going to find? I don't know. And it's just going to work out. It's perfect. Here we go. We, we did it perfectly. We don't need to be too quick here. We don't have the influence yet for expansion, but of course that's a juicy system to expand on. We already have a little bit of resources and then we have that archaeological dig site. That's going to be extremely interesting. And here, soon, soon, in two months, we're going to have something to show. And there we go. Um, but I want to save the alloys. I think, I think we can uh, quickly. Let's see how much does the outpost cost. Ninety. Ninety. Yeah, I think we're gonna wait and and just send it out there so we can expand on that system quickly before we build another science ship. I mean, that's also... Oh, we have another archaeological dig site discovered. It is covered. Get inside. And it's in, in the same system. Orbital imagery of Myrna's 2 clearly shows the infrastructure of a technological civilization. Oh, that's what, that's what we want to know. Seriously, despite massive urban areas linked by an extensive surface transport network, the planet seems totally abandoned. With no signs of extant sentient life the planet's core is more active than most but there's no sign of any disastrous event or anything else that would immediately explain the missing population where did they all go <gasps> strange things happening and we're going to adopt discovery because we want to find out we want to research the mysteries of space for tech and profit that's our goal. Upscaling complete. And here we go. A construction ship. Already send it over. So we can build as quickly as we can. Let's see. How much how much would we need for that? Influence, influence, influence. We don't already know. We'll move there and be there and do it. Let's see how quickly. Yeah, I mean, we should be ready soon, right? It's quite fine. It's okay. Let's see what we can do. What we will discover. And we now have an increased anomaly research speed. And that's going to help us um, a lot if we can. Oh, look at that. So many minerals. Outlier identified. Now we have Nathan Rigdon, and he's, I believe, over here on the Wanderer, and I think we should just research that. As we have mapped the stars going, and it's a routine task, C uh, 90, uh, 95C is at home to a number of exquisite impact craters. However, something breaks the visual uniformity in one of the larger craters. We'll research that. It's routine. It's fine. We'll do that. Maybe we can profit very early on. You never know. It will give us a bonus. And here we go. 
potential market survey completed. Nice. So we have a potential market survey complete. And we can build an outpost in, uh, <laughs> in the next month, actually. So that's going to work perfectly if, if we want. So now we have this, the Torch of Wisdom. Will let it explore that system. Um, or rather, survey already. There we go. And then, give me a little bit of slower. Here we go. Just before we arrive, we get to the right amount of influence for this. Yeah, that's that's what a perfect plan looks like, right? We, of course, we had one. Now, what I want to want to see is if we have enough available jobs here. We still have available jobs. We still have available jobs. And just the thing is um, that we might need a little bit, a little bit of amenities here, and we already have crime from pops. A little bit of crime. Uh, Hans Hope needs something. It needs something. And we're not going to get it quickly. So we might... We might as well do that. But we first need some minerals to do that. And that's the crucial thing. That's what we built the outposts for. And what we might build... Um, let me see. The science ship for. couple of months uh, in, in three months or so we can build another science ship and we will do so of course as we need to find out what a alien drag racing the crater on C-59 C exhibits long irregular marks imprinted into the relatively soft upper layers of the asteroid science officer Nathan Rigdon has recovered some interesting unexpected wreckage from the edges of the depression wheeled vehicles seemingly personal transports rather than Research craft. Oh, they made dragster races. <laughs> the crew of the Eden Wanderers speculate that the crater may once have been used for sport, with some alien species pitting their personal locomotion devices against each other in tests of mechanical strength or speed in near zero g. Wow, look at that! Six engineering researches possible there. Wow, that's that's going to be very helpful when we expand in there. Let's see. I think we can go for fast. I think it's fine. So here we go. Al Gol is the next system. Wow, so many things and ice asteroids even. Uh, that spells a lot of resources. We have a frozen world. We have a molten world. We have a toxic world. It's it's really not life friendly. Complete. But we've got this going, and now we can also start to build a science ship. And we can recruit another another leader for the science ship. Uh, expertise new worlds. That's gonna be. I mean, the resilient one is pretty good, but expertise new worlds is something that we are missing right now. And so we're gonna go for this man. And uh, give him soon the job of excavating. Here we go. Because we really, really want to know. And we'll start with the easier one, of course. Ah, yeah, that's what we should have done, right? Build a mining station here. No, we'll, we'll build a mining station here. And then... Do this probably. Here we go. So where's the first site? That is the Grunor site, and that is the easier one. The get in in site site. Here we go. Ah, I've gained a level with Nathan Rigdon. Wow, that was quick. It's really on it. Yeah, that was the site probably that he that he researched.
So, where are we now? Um, name is gonna change. G Mao for now is going to go for Murmus 2. Mur Murnus 2. I'm gonna rename that too. Let's see. Research anomaly. Um, I'm gonna have him go for that. G Mao. There's always some discussion if you should first like hurry out everywhere or if you sh should start already, but it's I think it's at least more fun to do to do it that way so you have not that big time of waiting. And it also has a lot of um, pluses if you if you go for the excavations early on. It can give you a lot of great, great things. Look at that system, it's really nice. Outlier identified. And what is that? Strong energy emissions of an unknown origin make this asteroid stand out from the rest of its peers in this crowded asteroid field. Let's have a look. Stands out. Yeah, you can clearly see the formations. Let's research that as well. So we know a lot about this quickly. Wow, I mean, <laughs> with the other one being meticulous, Nathan Rigdon is the one like catching all the anomalies. But here, Timothy Sackman has also gained a level. Very, very good. So let's see what we can quickly, hopefully we're getting into the mineral production as quickly as we can. So we can go and build that leisure um, we have received some rather troubling reports regarding the deteriorating health of Governor Simona Bolina. Her haggard appearance makes it look as though she has aged nearly 20 years. The burden of duty can be a heavy thing to bear. Oh my god, it's a substance abuser. <laughs> Say, what is she abusing? Probably alcohol, right? Everyone, like in this in these corporations, they pr probably have all in their desk like that drawer. One of the lower drawers where in a book there's hidden that that small flask of space whiskey algol 2 and a strategic resource discovered exotic gases that's nice during its survey on of algol 2 the eden torch discovered several exotic gases previously unknown to us these gases have a variety of different uses particularly in the operation of advanced energy-based weaponry and force fields some of the gases can also be used as starship fuel or even as recreational drugs yeah um yeah that 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 for simona right but we do not yet, poss yet possess the means to extract this resource we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploitation yeah it's not a bad system it also gives us alloys early on which is also not nothing to sneeze at not bad not bad exotic radiation we have that exotic radiation here. This particular asteroid is an extrasolar capture and appears to have been washed by some kind of exotic radiation as it plummeted through interstellar space before finally settling in the fact system. The original source of this radiation remains unknown, but the Eden Wanderer has been able to pick up a wealth of physics data by studying the asteroid's energy emissions. We get 150 physics research. That's, of course, very good. So here we go. And a lot that we get from this. And what else is gonna wait for us in this dark emptiness of space? That is not at all empty. Yeah, we're making steady progress in excavating. Hmm, alloys. Alloys would be good enough for another outpost here or it would be good enough for another science ship soon so we need to be watchful um we need a little bit more influence for another outpost so we could go for another science ship as soon as this is possible 
yeah, we're gonna go a little bit hog wild with the science ships. Um, because, yeah, we're research based and it, it helps just a lot at the start if you go for your strengths. And the strength is to boldly go further. A new age of exploration is upon us. As we once mapped the surface of our home world, we must now brave new terrain, space. There's a galaxy full of wonder waiting to be discovered. A little bit faster, too. And a little bit safer for the science ships. Here we go. And we'll have a look at the new leaders we can recruit. A particles expert and a carefree expert. Hmm. Now we have someone with particles. We don't have anyone carefree. It's not too bad. Resilient also is, is really tempting right now. Of course, carefree is so... Yeah, it's good, but... Mm, mm, on the other hand, it's 35% anomaly research speed. We could just use this one to always go for all the anomalies and ignore everything else. So... That sounds like it could be a strategy, so... <laughs> As this is a strategy game, we'll go for that. So I have the one to discover the anomalies, the other one to discover the anomalies as well. Upscaling complete. Um, let's see, I mean... Let's see what we can do then. We've had the mining station ready now, and let, now let's go to Algol. Algol has plentiful energy credits, so... It's a really good next outpost. So here we go. But until there's enough anom anomalies to research, we will send her to systems to, to survey them, of course. And where will we send her? Probably into this direction. The Enigma, a very nice name. Now let's fly out there. Explore the system quickly. And let's see what we find there. Yeah, we'll need a bit, we'll need a bit. And, and then we'll have it ready. And then also the Algol system will be fully um, uncovered. Outlier identified. Yeah, and that's that's a hard one, and we're gonna leave that be for now. And that's ideal now for her Sanwi Morty, astonishing asteroids. Here we go. I mean, she has a little bit of a. Uh... Wait, wait, wait. So she's still moving. The Enigma. We don't want her to be moving right now. We want her to go here and research that. Because she can do that very quickly. That's very hard. But um, we have that bonus and these big, big level anomalies they can give you big, big rewards. So uh, we're gonna we're just gonna risk that. We're gonna risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> so many bodies here, celestial so bodies. It's crazy. And what's the last one? This tiny. No, it's not surveyed. even the last one. And we'll leave that be as well. A significant scarring on the surface of this world. Uh, in a pattern that cannot be natural. From orbit, the massive rifts look almost like writing. Leave that be for now and give the wanderer another purpose. And we could discuss, maybe, I mean, but she has already started, oh, here, he has already started. She has already, has she? I mean, she's just arrived, not yet arrived, so we can send her 
here first. That makes a lot more sense right here on this one. So we don't have the level malice and when she's done that thing, then we can go back here. Yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see. Algol. Still things going to be discovered in that. It's crazy. And now we have the 500 minerals. Hmm. And I think now we should do something here in Cairns Hope. We should, we should just go. And even if it's just uh, something that will pass, it's, it's good to have the leisure district here. One leisure district is needed right now for that, because that's really not not a good not a good start. So here we go. And very soon, very soon we'll have a system enough has been surveyed. Uh, just lacking fourteen, so two two times it's fine. Timothy Sackman had a had his time there has discovered no anomalies, strangely. But it's gonna be fine. And we're gonna move over here with that ship. To the unknown system of two. Quite a lot of celestial bodies here again. Just about one tick, one tick away. Now, build that outpost. It's a really good system. Strike Force Kraken. <laughs> That's cool because not because it fits like the Merga Corp so much, but we can shout "Release the Kraken!" How's it going here? Look at that. Um, the new Eden complex might have some population well in, in a couple of months that we can use then. How is it in Camps Hope? There's a lot of jobs open and we're gonna add, add another one. Great. And here we still got available jobs. We don't need any resource especially so we're not gonna do anything on the planets except well, building that leisure, th leisure thing because um, district because we will we'll need that other than that we're still gonna go crazy with our re research ships I think four ships is 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 probably enough right now it's probably something <laughs> well, I shouldn't go overboard oh we've got alien writing look at that Someone used the mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing into the surface of fact 6a. The massive script covers a large portion of the moon's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. Fascinating. Oh, that's so good. And we've learned a bit, a bit from that. Just a bit. And we're just going to go for it. Doesn't matter. We'll do it relatively quickly in that specialized in that 960 days it's three years of our life but it's going to be worth it uh, and with that and the interesting new discoveries we will have sooner or later rather sooner with the the sites here i'd say thank you for watching and happy gaming to you we'll see each other in the next episode where we'll probably expand a little more and maybe we'll meet some aliens. <laughs> Have a good time. Until next time at Happy Gaming, this is Manuel Khan signing out. See you soon.